Hello, everybody. My name is Dion Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from the top four. We've made it to the top four of the Ace Flight Club Championship. If you're not familiar with the Flight Club Championship Series, we've had um, different games, uh, excuse me, different events that were qualifiers, and depending on how players did, they got placed in a different championship level. We had three different championships, and this is the third one, the top, the Aces, five to six wins, and we are down to our top four, and I want to take a second to recognize all four of those players. We have Steve Cotillo and Kaspars Bulindes, who we have right here on the on the screen. We also have Daniel Schwireb and Matthew Carey. Those are our top four players fighting right now to find out who is the ace of aces. Now, I'm about to open up this Choose Your Champion right away. Um, Darren, go ahead and break down the Rebels. Marcel, break down the Empire. Let's go. Choose your champion. Okay, so over on the left-hand side of your screen, we've got player one who is Kaspars flying the Rebel Alliance, and he is running uh, Braylon Stram in the B-Wing. Tenum in the B-Wing with stabilized S-Foils, Garvin Drace in the X-Wing with S-Foils, and Dutch Vander in the Y-Wing with Ion Cannon Turret, Ion Torpedoes, and Thermal Detonators. Over to you, Marcel. All right. There you go. On the right-hand side, you've got Steve, and Steve is flying uh, four Black Squadron Strikers, and... Um, they all have thermal detonators and disciplined. And then supporting them is the new Commandant Goron after a friendly ship at range zero three 3 with a lower initiative bumps uh, or partially executes a maneuver. They can perform a red action, which pairs up really well with the adaptive ailerons and Predator coming in at 193 points. So he's got a pretty good bid for... Um, initiative three ships awesome. and here you go doing the um the, the the i don't know if it's called a trick but doing what they do which is move so right here he's doing it fast but ideal they would be taking a stress but then clearing it right away with um so they take a stress to get this first focus token and then reveal a blue maneuver clear it and yep. then um end up the, with double tokens it's fantastic Fo focus evade i heard it's good <laughs> now real quick quick shout out to desert iceman welcome to the channel welcome to the fam here i've uh, been following us uh, since early january 2020 but he, he gave us a direct shout out i had to, had to say hi all right so people are choosing their champion right now Darren, who do you think has the advantage in this matchup? So, it's an interesting matchup. Sorry, you caught me just inhaling Take a it. sandwich. I, I, was, I was like, oh, I caught the man eating. <laughs> so, it's an interesting matchup. Um, with, the, um, with the Rebels having the initiative here, and a lot of health to kind of get through, I don't think the bombs are going to come in as much as they did for the um that we saw earlier against the jedi mm -hmm. so honestly in this one i'd probably go for the rebels all right and we'll pass it on over to marcel i'm actually gonna go the opposite way i like the um the empire here a lot so one of the things that the empire do well is take advantage of dying <laughs> with the discipline and he puts out a lot of damage uh he being uh caspers the rebelist puts out a lot of damage the um, the thing is with three of those four ships being one agility ships and they're and the uh the black squadrons being with double tokens it's probably going to take two or three ships shooting at it in order to kill one and you lose one of those strikers, but at that point, you're probably going to have a target lock focus uh, from, you know, three other ships or maybe even four other ships, depending on uh, because it come, because uh, Goron would also have a target lock in that case as well. 
Actually, he wouldn't, right? He doesn't have discipline. No, yeah, he doesn't have it. No, but, r- yeah. Real, real quick, but I don't. But you would still oh. have three sh- three ships shooting target lock focus back at one of those B wings. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're they're one agility, it, baby. You can burn them down. Yeah, it's just I, I like the damage race in favor of of um of the empire empire here. Now, really quickly, if you didn't catch it, uh, we did see Braylon hit the cloud and roll a crit. So he's already down one shield going into the engagement. If you guys didn't catch that, you could look at that overlay and see Braylon is minus one shield already. And we're starting it right now. 10 nub getting a target lock on that back line of strikers. Focus evade every turn is possible for those strikers. They are defensive. And honestly, taking this engagement at range three, not too bad. Here's the B-Wing shenanigans, linked actions, focus into, uh, into a stress. Going to scoot up as much as possible to hoping to do some focus fire. Does 10 nub have the, the as foils? He does. He does, but not for, uh, he does not have a secondary cannon. So no no bonus attacks for the B-Wing. Yeah, he's doing that mostly so you can have a target lock and then the stress for the, so you can get rerolls plus the four, uh, the double modded shots, so that way they mm-hmm. both 10 and Braylon get the double modded shots. It's good, yeah. This, that's one of those things where you know you look at the card and you, you, some people was like, oh, you know, if I have S foils, got to go straight cannon. It's like, nope, you can, uh, you can, you can do it other ways as well. But yeah, it gives you that uh, barrel roll into linked target lock, and of course, both of these B wings, their abilities trigger on stress. Tenna being able to spend the stress in order to uh, to modify your your focus results, essentially as a focus, fully fully modified. It's good. Who knew? Yeah, both of these B wings being fully modified with the stress there is great because Braylon's got the built in rerolls himself. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's what makes these. That's why consistently you've seen these B wings constantly played because they are just they're great value, great value. They're really good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was B Wings that won me my invite to Worlds uh, when we had big in person play. It was the the classic Rebel Beef. And here we go, starting with Trail Mix, spending the lock, and after spending the stress, that's going to be three hits. Yep, and you can spend it for zero consequences because you're not being shot at here. Mm hmm. And spend and evade, first damage. In the game, going to be going in. on that blue striker. And Braylon's out of arc. Out of range, excuse me. Now, here's my question to you guys. Here, you know, Jonah, I'll, I'll, you know, you've been on the stats all day. I got, I got a question for you. Here's a stats question. Who, who do you think, who do you think... The audience has favored in the Choose Your Champion betting. By the way, it's open for one more minute. One more minute. One damage for one damage I, on each side. I think um, people will favor Steve Cutillo. Uh, we saw the effectiveness of um, the strikers earlier today. Uh, it's a great little gimmick where uh, he can use Commandant. Warren's ability with the ailerons and then mm-hmm. still get uh, another action like a reposition or evade and i don't feel that uh without the new stuff people have much faith in the rebels um even though they're one of my favorites i uh that that's what i would say mm-hmm. yep and and right now you're you're correct right now 56 percent of the audience is favoring the empire and we'll see how this ends up shaking out. One of the things I do want to talk about, look at Kaspar's position. I like that he's created a, uh, a bit of a pincer here. He's going to have the B-Wings on one side, likely banking in next turn. And and then Dutch and Garvin, I'm just kind of expecting them to do a, what, a one forward maybe? Or yeah, are they one banking and, as well? You want to try and uh, go slow with the Rebels here because what you want to do is try and engage one or two of the uh, the strikers with all of your list. Um, he's gonna. Um, Steve's gonna find it difficult to pull off the uh, the double modded, um, double tokened uh, ability this round, just because he's got a turn. Um, whereas the 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 turns on the strikers aren't blue, so he wouldn't be able to clear that stress. Um, yeah, I wonder if he tried out like bumping at an angle and then doing the too soft. 
Mm. Yeah, I mean the two the two bank uh, being blue um, still gets him that. Uh... Yeah, like starting the bump train at an angle, and then it'll give you close to a turn, not a complete turn. I don't know if that if that works here. Now, I, I just want to go ahead and read, because uh, a couple of people are still um, not entirely sure on how Com Commandant Goran works. So, we'll read it one more time for you. So, after a friendly ship at range 0 to 3, with a lower initiative than yours, partially executes a maneuver, it may perform a red focus action. Now, that synergizes with the adaptive ailerons, because the adaptive ailerons are a maneuver. So, here we go. Blue partially executes their ailerons, which is a maneuver, able to do the red focus, clears it, on the one bank and now it's their actual perform action step and they are getting an evade so focus evade that's that's the combo that uh that steve has been leaning on essentially double actions for the cost of a ship and i'll tell you you know we talked about it during the first game tie strikers these generic tie strikers were not being played in this series at all commandant goron single-handedly bringing them up and one thing that happens all the time in these series, and you guys know this, uh, Marcel and, and Darren, um, when somebody shows success with a, a list that we haven't seen in a while, people are going to start taking new looks at it, and that's going to start some evolution in the uh, Commandant Gorin and Striker space. Yeah, we're going to see an evolution of this. I don't see really much design space to go with it because it's very efficient and it's, it needs that bid. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see probably some people stripping out a couple of the bombs, maybe. But yeah, and I don't know if you need to go below the 193, but yeah, I think that's probably where you get some. Um, I think in this particular list, the bombs is probably where you get the most flexibility if you want to throw some, uh, not you know, counter nets or uh, if you're jumping over to to extend it and you want to carry it over you, you have access to seismic or is even a seismic even a mm -mm. I seismic, don't think so. uh, hyperspace right i don't uh, think no. no i don't well, think they so are yeah and extended you can swap them up to high uh you can bump them up since they're one point more to seismic and just play around that way hmm. yeah i just think we might see a, a bidding war like we did previously with the like the nantex where it'd be a nantex and five droids uh, well, actually, it would be a Nantex and four droids. That type of uh, shenanigans where it's this list, but only two of the strikers have got bombs, and then one of the strikers have got bombs. Um, just to chip away, because you, you need that initiative against the other I3s. I know you, you struggled with your list this weekend, Marcel, because you didn't have that bid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm, I'm surprised that the barrel roll with 10 num because... Um... I, I mean, I know why he did it, but right. he could have also gone to the right and failed it in, uh, with Dutch because now he's essentially guaranteeing that he's going to be <laughs> going over the, the, the cloud next turn. I guess maybe he's seen the B-Wings as his um, big offensive push here and uh, making it so that He's protecting those above the others, so he's he's dodged out of arc there with the B wings. Yes, he's giving the um, the strikers their defensive ability uh, from the cloud, which is a shame. Um, but see how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, with, with the strikers being focused evade, I, I'm not sure how much damage he's going to push in here. Um, watch out, Garvin. Black bad stuff's about to happen. Well, here's the first shot, Garvin, likely going into the lead striker. Three hits. Yep. Spend it. Give it to Dutch. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, this is going into oh, blue. Yeah, probably the one, the one with the lock. Yeah, he spent both tokens, and uh, he's spending evade. He's debating whether to spend the focus or not. Looks like he's not. He's taking, taking, uh, taking it so that he's down to one on the I blue striker. I am actually highly surprised at this because he could have stayed alive. He's got a gas cloud protecting him, and Duchess ion missile can only do a max of one damage, or even the yeah. ion cannon. So Should he could have stayed post, alive. Then. Yeah. He he could have very well stayed alive. Yeah, there's no wish, yeah. there's no Nash Windrider in this list. <clears throat> but if he does die, then uh, Dedicated gets the other guy's locks. So maybe that's how he's playing it. We saw in the first in the first round match where um, he did a similar thing. Mm -hmm, yeah, with discipline. Yeah, for sure. Here's yeah. Dutch. Yeah, so like right here, he's dead. I mean, it's yeah, guaranteed dead. dead. So that focus is not going to do him any good because mm -hmm. he's not going to spend it on. I mean. 
yeah, that no, does keep nothing it. for them. Oh no, because he's not. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. It's yeah, not then you don't have Nash, Nash yeah. so he's just gone. So yeah, I'm just surprised he didn't spend both there. Uh, it even forced the B wings to shoot at it instead of shooting at something else. The possible missed opportunity there. And the ship is not removed until after um, after engagement. After the engagement of this initiative. And it looks like... Which is important because uh, the other option other than target lock is a uh, barrel roll. And sometimes you need that barrel roll to, to put yourself in a position to shoot. And um, these, these strikers but with are... the ship staying there, you can't get it. You see, he's taking it out of the way. Mm -hmm. But to your point, it should still be there. Um, and you saw the strikers deciding to take the disciplined lock onto Garvin. The other thing uh, that we we failed to mention, not failed to mention, but we just haven't mentioned yet, uh, is the fact that strikers don't normally they don't have lock on their on their action bar. So this gives them a, an action that they normally don't have. And here we go, three hits going at the strikers and the cloud. Oh, what one more must have been a range three shot. This might be going to Nash. No. Why four dice? Am I missing something? Was it range uh, three? They were all at range three. Oh, it was range three. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, we were going from, from, from Braylon first. Yep. Yep. Dirt. All right. Well, here we go. All right. Trail mix. Spend the, lot, the stress for two. Still has a focus. And he might just end up. Nah, he's gonna he's gonna hold up. He's gonna hold it. Spend the spend the focus. No damage there. You have yeah, the lock. Yeah, that's where it mattered. Shooting at the other one first. I mean, not shooting. Spending that focus so that the other shots go at, and you yeah. you can serve your tokens. And it begins. Commandant Gorin goes first, firing at Dutch. I am actually surprised that that Dutch has a folk. Yeah, Dutch has a focus, and all your target locks are on Garvin. Garvin, maybe he expects to be able to take uh, Garvin out with the uh, the three strikers. I mean, it's 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 nine dice, but you, there's no no guarantees. Yeah, it's uh... it's a good start. All right, hit hit crit, and Garvin right. takes two shields. Obviously, if he clears it, it ends up working out. But he's, he could essentially have uh, made the same situation by shooting uh, Commandant first and have that insurance of the last striker to either finish uh, finish Garvin or go into Dutch. Yeah, two more coming in. So he's got he's got to put in he's got an opportunity to kill him. But mm -hmm. again, it's it's yeah, uh, I agree. Commandant should have gone into Garvin. I think it's just but... some questionable choices here oh it's finding that folk yeah. big deal uh and again this is just but i think also just uh you've been playing this is yep two days straight just um just fatigue and that mm -hmm. happens had an opportunity to get garvin out of the out of there yeah and we saw there um uh, i don't know about you marcel but we saw with the the blue squadron uh, the blue black squadron, the blue striker. Mm. Uh, he, he chose not to spend the focus and let the ship die. Um, and then with the green one, he chose to spend the focus and not take a single point of damage. But personally, I'd have reversed that the other way. So I'd have taken the point of damage on green mm -hmm. to keep the focus target lock for the double modded shot. And I'd have tried to save blue to make one of the other B-wings shoot into it what, what, what's your thoughts oh 100 yeah you need to uh, you know when it, knowing that the shot on the green was the last shot and the max you were going to receive was one damage yeah um yeah you, you can serve that again just target priority and, and token spend um it's not over yet but now you have garvin even with one health um going to have what you would imagine is four dice coming into a um yeah it'll be four dice probably probably modded dice because um you imagine the 
Dutch is going to bail out to the left and guarantee that lock for, for Garvin. So, again, yeah, unless, it, unless it, the strikers go fast here. Which is a possibility. Um, it is a possibility. And this is, you know, it. You know, obviously, Steve, great player. He's made it to the top four. And you're right, fatigue is definitely uh, a factor. And one of the, some of the times we see these these mistakes get made, when you think about, and this is for, for all players, when you think about a single dice roll in isolation, when you're just looking at it kind of in a vacuum, but the reality is that your decision-making on each dice roll can affect things down the line, talking specifically about resources available what you know what are the consequences of either choosing to shoot x ship or y ship of spending a token or not uh you know and seeing what what is available for your opponent to do to you as well now to the point of uh, of one of our viewers in the chat of course if blue doesn't die they don't all have the target locks true but then you have a, a four ship, so I think those that's likely uh, a, a little more valuable in um, uh, you know in, yeah, in retrospect. I think I think blue was always going to die in that engagement. It just meant that, that one of the B wings would have to shoot at him mm. uh, because uh, Dutch's torpedoes could only do the one point of damage. So being being at uh, uh, one hole left meant that that it was pretty much a sure thing from having a focused target lock and the torpedoes. Whereas if all of a sudden you've still got one hole left, yeah, you're ioned, but you're still an annoying ship for next round. So the B wings would have then had to pump some some work into uh, into the striker. Love it. Now, I want to remind everybody that today's matches are brought to you by the Galactic Championship Series, Gold Squadron's premier worldwide series looking forward to seeing how this ends up starts in may may 1st is our first qualifying event our Moncala championship will crown a champion there and top 32 from each event are invited to the battle for alderaan the finale the galactic championship finale uh, taking place in november and uh, this is our, our way to provide for the X-Wing community an, an outlet for competition and, and crown a, a global champion, which I'm super excited about. We had absolutely fantastic participation. Uh, last Galaxies, we had uh, something we had something like 700-ish people participate in that, which was great. Different players. And uh, I'm hoping that we can break that. Well, I want to get to 800. I want to get to 800 players. We got more qualifiers. We got more time zones. Um, more prize, more of everything, more of everything, more, 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 more. So, uh, just trying to put on something for you guys. Go ahead, goldsquadronpodcast.com or exclamation point galaxies. Now let's talk. Let's talk about what's happening here. So we saw some great awareness there and some great use of um, the uh, the ability that we spoke about from um, the imperial side with uh, the red moving into block and then the uh, the other two uh, strikers bumping into each other to be able to then give them the uh, the focus of aid so red's moved in to be an, anu an annoyance and then the uh, the other two strikers are, are fully tokened up but then on the rebel side we saw the um b wings knowing full well that they're probably going to bump um making sure that they give themselves their stress so they still get a mod mm -hmm. uh so we've got 10 num going through the gas cloud uh with the three bank stress himself out uh, in order to uh, give him that uh, focus modifier ability and uh, Braylon making sure that he does a white maneuver so that he uh, manages to keep his uh, stress for his rerolls. Yeah, this is um, and this is where Garvin needed to disappear because now has now Garvin has a four dice modded shot. Yep, yep, into With yellow. His lock. And that's going to be three hits. You know, you're at least taking one. And you have to spend both tokens. Mm. Is, is he still only spending one again? He spent one. Do you spend the focus? It's the yellow striker. Think... Yeah, he's got two more shots coming at him. He's got a B-wing. He's got Braylon, double-modded shot coming at him. And then he's also got a Y-wing um, ion coming at uh, uh, The likelihood of yellow being alive is very low. You use it when you can. He's keeping it. Well, now, he only this, took one damage card. This so he's keeping it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, it. There we go. yeah. 
these you, this engagement you. has echoes. Uh, we'll talk about it next next turn. Has echoes of something that happened in our top sixteen game. Um, I'll, I'll remember to bring it up here in a little bit. But let's go ahead, keep going in this engagement. <clears throat> the green striker being threatened here by the B wing Ted Nub has him at range one, four dice. Just one, 10 num, unable to spend any tokens, and this striker still going to end up possibly taking one. No, never mind. He's got an evade. No damage. Yeah, he's going to need some, some, some dice luck here to come out ahead. Oh, one dice out the box. Ooh. He's got three. Looking for one more. Braylon. He needs two paints. Or... He's dead. dead. Yeah, dead. Go. Now, that does allow Green to barrel roll off of uh, Garvin. Uh, yes. Let's see if he goes that right. Green can barrel roll to the right. And mm -hmm. that would be the only shot on, on Garvin this turn. Yeah, and Red gets the... Nope, uh, the he no, went with the target lock. He's going for the oh, target lock. He's so choosing crazy. violence. No, 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 but hold on, hold on. Uh -huh. he, he's got bombs. He's got bombs this next turn. So he might be, be hoping, and this is what I was, I was going to mention, is uh, since the engagement's over here, is last game when he was uh, top 16, when we saw Steve play against the Jedi, he did the same thing. He kind of sets up a joust. Uh -huh. They bump all over the place, and then... Bomb City after that. And the B-Wings and Garvin are, are right in that range of possibly getting uh, some thermal detonators. We have one more attack here. Here's Dutch attacking uh, and not getting anything. No ionizations happening. And here's Commandant Gorin. Okay, to Dutch what, here. Where did Gorin's... Target lock go. Oh, he doesn't have it. I keep forgetting. Yeah, it does he went not with have predator discipline. instead of uh, discipline on him. Dead discipline. Sorry, keep saying discipline. Yeah, yeah. Keep thinking he's got discipline on Gorin. Who do you go for here? I, I think you I either think you go just try to get the Y wing out of it. I think yeah. uh, the Y wing is what's um, because you know where the B wings are going to be. Hopefully, Garvin will die on a bomb. Yeah, the yeah, the B-Wings taking some bombs. I think if you try and strip away the shields here. And we got oh, nothing. Just the one. Oh. Commandant Gore. Hey, hey you, you did it. You pushed through a damage. Shields down. So yeah, these two strikers should, in theory, with the uh, focus target locks. All right. You got two guaranteed results, and that's yep. going to be four. Three hits and a crit, and that Y-Wing is taking all of it. Shields were down already. You're going to bring that uh, down to two hull. And what's the crit? Damage what's sensor. In the box? Damage sensor array. Which maybe won't matter. Let's be honest. Dutch hates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his his whole ability is built off of target locks. Well, let's see if he even lives here. He's got uh, two no. hits. One more guarantees his death. Oop. No, he can he can live. There's so a chance. He gone. Ooh, almost. Almost. He gone. The damage sensor rate turns out didn't matter because you're dead. <laughs> so with um, Commander Gorin being. Initiative four, moving second. He's still, you know, it, he's still an ace. It's still a um. So even he, he alone can can go ahead and and ace these with forty five minutes left. His could ace the the B wings. Just poke at, poke at them and have smart engagement. So this this is pretty far from over. Um, yeah, and the, the, the good thing with him this round is that he can he can disengage and he knows it. So just yeah. doing like a three bank to, to squirrel away and get out of there. Because as we saw in the top 16, doesn't necessarily like being on his own bombs. Now, I, I want to answer a question here in the chat. Rookie1Fun asks, 
do we know do we have any signs or have any doing any signs of ffg slash amg uh, knowing that this striker spam with discipline was a testing miss um like oops uh, we forgot about that to alien Ron. specifically he's actually talking about more about goran than uh, than discipline you know it I would say here's the thing: these strikers have not been relevant, so it. I don't want to say that it doesn't matter. Is it? It. it but we we don't know if it's an actual problem yet. It is simply a cheeky combo that a player figured out. Now there may there might be more people who like. Obviously, I had not seen it before the top sixteen. We were going through it, and then I had that realization of, oh my goodness, you can do this. Uh, but the reality is that it does have limitations. If you do split up the strikers, because here's the thing: here's the thing, they have to bump, they have to bump Commandant Gorin in order for it to work. Also, if you just kill Commandant Gorin, which I makes mean, not easier, easier said than done, right? He, you know, that also triggers uh, that that disables the the double actions, though it does trigger disciplined, right? So, yeah. so you end up potentially being punished there, but there, there's definitely still some counterplay. Yeah, and it's not, definitely not broken. I mean, look at it from the um, fr from the perspective that they still only have two defensive dice and mm -hmm. four health without shields, so they die. They do pop quick, as you've seen. Uh, two turns, two of them die. Um, and to your point about just going after uh, Goran first, it's. So it's a similar puzzle to solve than Sloan. When you have a Sloan swarm, you know, your aces or your ships are trying to go around the the bulk of the swarm to get to the one that's making, you know, the carrier that's making all of that work. So you, you could essentially, with them being initiative three, if you've got ships moving after it, B-wings are not the right ones. But if you got fast ships moving around it, A-wings or other things like that, just... Um, just kite them until you get behind Goran and 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 go go at that approach. <laughs> oh man, love it! Oh, looks like we lost Jonah for a second there. It looks like they might be set now. A lot of thought going into this round. I mean, they, the um, the rebels know that the bombs are coming, right? Yeah, there's yeah. four bombs coming. There's no way that there's not. And ten numb not being able to shed the stress by uh, getting a focus result. Um, the question like is, you, the UK turn here, probably not, right? You you can't. Ten numb can't. Braylon can't. No, I was Garvin talking about can. the strikers. Oh, the the strikers. Um, I like the sloop. Um. I don't think you can with green. You can't afford to bump because you're going to need distance for red thermal detonators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the four coming. So I think with green, the uh, ailerons left sloop right fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you want to keep your tokens for. You still want to have some tokens though. Uh, I, I imagine he knows they're coming with Garvin. Uh, three hard to the left. And then the B-Wings will just, again, also Think try to... Okay. Yeah, just try Got to it. disengage and barrel away from them or something. Weather the storm, yeah. Try to just minimize the number of bombs you're actually taking. There is the sloop from the Strikers. Let's see what the green one does. And deciding to go ahead and clear and probably also sloop. Yes, that is formation... Flying mm. there, trying mm -hmm. to get out of the way. Trying to get out of the way of the beings specifically, but um, yeah, you see, that's only going to take one at most. There's the three hard. Mm. He's only going to take one as well. I think Braylon's probably taken two, but I mean, it's it's within it's within that. It's same. super close. And oh, okay. Well, ten nubs taken. A few. Ten nubs taken. Three, maybe four. And Commandant Gorin, aggressive. That is, wow, that is... Um, yeah, I'm surprised by that. I love that sloop, though. Look, he's got a nice flank shot right there on Garvin. Yeah. So here Ten comes four of them. Open. First one does nothing. Yeah, Garvin's taking all four. Blank. Yeah. No, Garvin's only taking two. Sorry. Yeah, um, ten. Ten, my bad. Oh, it feels bad. Double blank. Oh. All right, okay. So th you got... Th he's going with this one first 10 nub takes strain strain, strain. Uh. 
Here's Braylon. Takes a crit. Braylon That's a shield. A yep. And now here's the one that matters. <laughs> takes a damage. And, ooh, he needed that. Yep, Gone. Yeah. Garvin taken on the board. That is at the end of the activation phase, not engagement phase. No simultaneous fire. The board doesn't stay on the board. It is just gone as soon as it is destroyed. Next bomb going back into 10 nub. And that's going to be nothing. 10 nub, man. lucky, man. Good Buy a lottery <laughs> ticket, fam. <laughs> Strain. 10 nub, 0 for 4. Now, and that's uh, good there because it means that Braylon being double strained, mm -hmm. whatever those strikers now roll, it, it sinks him. Yeah, the double strain on Braylon is definitely going to end up mattering. Yeah. No rerolls there. Ah, uh, yeah, which is good, good call. Keep those strains for... Yeah. Yeah, keeping for the, the strains for the strikers. Yeah, that, that is a good call. Oh, nope, he's going to focus fire. Deciding to go with the focus fire. Uh, nope, going back yes. to 10 nub. <laughs> I think 10 nub is the better call. Like you said, the, the strikers have... Uh... Oh, two crits. There you go. And the cloud. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for that reason, because he's got the the focus and the cloud. Mm -hmm. Um. No go, Braylon. Yep. Go Braylon. There range we go. Two. So just within no dice range. Whatever you get, you get. And three, three? hits <laughs> sink in right there. Half points. Yes, half point down to three hole. Braylon. Yeah, this is. This could be it right here. Big swing. And one more hit. That's still pretty massive. And let's let's talk yeah. about the end game here a little bit. If you if you clear Braylon off the board next turn, and the and the strikers die, you, you're gonna have Commandant Gorin versus Ten Nub in the end game. And Steve's moving second. And these interceptors, they here, insert Star Wars quote. They can really move. <laughs> I mean, I suppose the only advantage is if you've got 10 numbers, your end game ship is they're the better knife fighter because sure. they can still do the K-turns or the uh, Talon rolls and have the uh, the stress and then spend it, whereas Braylon can't spend it. Yeah, Braylon's kind of stuck trying to chase you old school. Yoaz, as I'm in the chat, says, oh, just a few minutes ago, I was saying that Casper's had it in the bag. Not so sure anymore. That's what you can't call it, fam. Too early. Yeah, I don't think Too early to call. It in the bag. It's been, uh, I think there was some, he made it difficult on himself on a couple occasions. Well, specifically, actually, on one occasion, I want to say a couple, on one occasion, just with the token spending. But other than that, he's he's done exactly what he's wanted to do outside of that. Okay, going with the one bank here. I think he's just trying to guarantee he doesn't get shot by uh -huh. both ships. Exactly. <laughs> Old Man Sam 2020, yes. The dice do give it and taketh away. Now, the Red Striker kind of had no choice. He's going to have to to take the take some fire here. There was no way to clear, clear the stress. Now, could have done a two straight, I believe, right? And, and end up with a bump, but... We'll see what they get. Oh, 10. 10 might be able to barrel roll into a shot. But if they have arc on the red striker as well, maybe just focus fire. Yeah, 10's at a really awkward angle here. I don't think the barrel roll backwards fits to the right. Super close. <laughs> the, I mean, there's no harm in doing it because you, you take the focus barrel roll. And then at least you're you, you're double modded. Yep, I like it. And gonna barrel roll away, saying, "You know what? I'd rather not get shot. Reserve the health on ten nub, um, than have two shots into the red striker. Though the the red striker is gonna have a shot on downtown over there, setting up a target lock for next turn. Barrel roll lock. Commandante. Very I like it. That is a super aggressive. Yeah. But very little chance of, uh, yeah. Getting punished not, for it. Yeah, it's and not being he might end up though. with the... Uh, with the bullseye there, it's close. He also might just take the shot into uh, to Braylon if he doesn't die here. Two hits 
Braylon going into the striker. Ooh, watch out. Don't blank out, little striker. Yep. Then you're going to die. Oh. That's not. We, we saw. He got two. Was it last? In top 16, mm -hmm. he had two strikers, one shot, and still won the game. It was nuts. It was on a final salvo. By the way, if you didn't watch that first game, uh, the top 16 game, I, a good time. Uh, on, top 16 wasn't the final salvo. That wasn't the final. Was it, was it the top eight? I thought it, it was. No, it was top 16. It was. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, because top eight was the Matt, Matt Curry match. We just saw Confirm one. Confirm top 16. Yeah, one yeah, damage into 10 up there. Yeah. One shield. Striker range one going at Braylon, guaranteed oh. dead. Braylon going bye bye. Pop, yeah, pop, this pop, is, pop, uh, pop. yeah, just re roll it for reasons. Warrior Maple asking, is it on YouTube yet? No, we, we, it just happened a couple a uh, couple hours ago, so uh, it is still in the in the editing bay. I believe right now the veteran championship games are going up. We should be nearing nearing the end of those. Followed by Ace. Ace after that. Yeah, <laughs> in a rough spot today. And these Rebels. Rebels going down. <laughs> Did anybody fly Resistance? Talking about, like, what's make? Nope. Was there any Resistance even played? There was zero. Zero Resistance in the event. <laughs> in the entire event. Uh-huh. Good yeah, we'll go ahead. I'll, you know what? I'll give you. I'll give you that breakdown. I'll give you that breakdown right now. We had uh, again. This is the ace. So this is only people who went five wins or six wins. So it wasn't a huge group of people uh, this is for the aces. But here's the here's the faction breakdown. Largest faction was Empire with eighteen, followed by Rebels with sixteen. Then you had the Republic and Separatists tied at eight. Scum and Villainy with six, First Order five, and Resistance, the Goose Egg, zero, zilch, nada. I'm surprised that both Resistance and, um, oh, that's a really good move, get the block in. At Resistance and the, um, um, Scum, I was expecting more Scum. And I'm surprised that there are no Zam, uh, Wessels in the uh, cut in the in the cut anymore. Yeah, no Zam Jangles, Zam Jangles, Jangle Zams. Do we think is is that a commentary on just the new stuff is good enough to push it out, or is it people just experimenting and we're just gonna see it come right back? I think it's a combination of both because some of the, um some of the stuff that's good, you know. Is is I think discipline, for example, is is Django and Zan don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, also, the Hera and all that stuff that's happening with the rebels is it, it makes life difficult for Django and Zan. And Ten Num right there took taking two damage. Ten Num blocked by the red striker and is is being pummeled right now. Potentially Ouch. up to four more damage. Gu three guaranteed. And it is going to be all four. This B wing is down to two hull, guys. Um, mm, oh, sorry, one hull. Math hard. Yeah, it's it's not a good day at the office for Tenum. Um, but I I think this this list that we've got here from Steve would eat uh, Django uh, Zam. Zam. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, just just will. It, yeah, it will chew through two ship lists. They have uh, decided to call it here, and Daryl is encouraging them to flip the table. <laughs> um, so <laughs> he's joking. I mean, but we we could let them flip the table because we've got to reset the. Uh, yeah, they, the, they can go ahead. The if you, you you can give them permission. Go ahead. They have permission. <laughs> you are. Allowed. You may flip the table when ready. Don't flip it for them. Nope, oh, it's on them. There it is. <laughs> uh, do we have? Uh, how's the other match? Do we have time to jump on the other one with half hour left? Yeah, um, I don't know the status of it, but I'll hop in and talk to them. All right. Well. Yeah, that was a. Um, 
That was an interesting game. It, it sw- once it started swinging, it swung so heavily, so fast. 